All right, practice problem number three associated with sample problem E. A baseball is thrown at an angle of 25 degrees relative to the ground at a speed of 23.0 meters per second. <clears throat> if the ball is caught 42.0 meters from the thrower, how long was it in the air? And then how high above the thrower did the ball travel? So let's kind of decode some of this stuff here. First off, well, we do have a delta x, right? Uh, if the ball was caught 42.0 meters from the thrower, uh, the baseball was thrown at an angle of 25 degrees relative to the ground. What else do we know? Uh, speed, speed, right? Um, the ball was thrown, so it's going to be an initial velocity. Um, and then we have a how uh, we have a how high. So, spoiler alert: we're going to need to know what acceleration is, but it's going to be acceleration in the y direction. So you guys know that that means uh, all of the acceleration in the y direction is due to gravity, but it's going down. So we have to represent it with a negative sign. So it's going to be negative 9.81 meters per second squared. All right, uh, we're going to be uh, having some fun here. We're being asked for how long was it in the air? Now, if we use good old-fashioned kinematic equation that looks like this, Uh, we, we can get somewhere. Now, this gobbledygook is going to look pretty uh, pretty scary to you, but um, when when we're talking about how long this thing was in the air, this ball was in the air, we're we're talking about time. And we do know this total delta x. We know this initial velocity. But we're like, oh, what's the acceleration? It's zero. The ball has already been thrown, so in the x direction specifically, there's no change in velocity. That means that the acceleration has a numerical value of zero, meaning that that bad boy, that, that part of the equation goes away. And so we're left with delta x is equal to that initial velocity multiplied by delta t. Now we're being asked how long was the ball in the air, so I need to solve for delta t. To solve for delta t, I'll divide both sides by that initial velocity. And so this ends up being, uh, when I solve it for delta t, uh, I have delta x divided by initial velocity. But it's being thrown at an angle, so I do have to plug in um, the angle, okay, that, that 25 degrees. The question is, am I plugging in a sine of 25 degrees or cosine of 25 degrees? Well, let, let's, let's draw our situation here. So uh, here is ground, here's the ball. There's that perfect parabola. Point here. Anyone's complaint, it's definitely Definitely a uh, perfect parabola. And so here we have uh, the distance between these two points is my delta x. Okay. So uh, in order to solve for this delta t, uh, I, I have to consider this delta x. Okay, well, this is, this is my angle. Okay, with respect to the ground, it's 25 degrees. So here's the angle adjacent over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse. So that means it's actually going to be a cosine of the angle, okay, cosine of the angle, not sine, cosine. If I was doing something with regard to the y-axis, uh, then I would use sine, right? Because that would be opposite over the hypotenuse. All right, um, where are we at? I think we're in a situation where we can actually just plug in the now. I believe so. So this delta t, the hair there, uh, 
Let's see, what was my delta? Oh yeah, 42.0 meters divided by, um, what's my initial velocity? 23.0 meters per second. And then it's going to be cosine of the angle, which is 25 degrees. And this ends up being, okay, what are you telling me? Um, okay, so three, uh, I guess I still need to use two significant figures because that's 25 degrees. Um, so I guess I'd go 2.0, yeah. So that baseball is actually going to be in the air for 2.0 seconds. Okay. Again, I started with this uh, kinematic equation because I'm only talking about uh, the x direction. There's no there's no change in velocity, right? So acceleration zero it means I can get rid of uh, this uh, second half of the equation. Then I can use the smaller part of the equation to solve for delta t. I do have to uh, take into consideration the cosine of the angle uh, because this this uh, initial velocity is actually the hypotenuse, not the x component. So I have to uh, make it talk about the x component. So that's why I use the cosine of the angle there and multiply by that, or multiply that by the initial velocity. All right, uh, second part of the question, how high above the thrower did the ball travel? So um, how high? So that's gonna, gonna be y, uh, y max. Okay, um, so for this one, the the best kinematic equation to use is actually going to be Vf squared is equal to uh, Vi squared plus 2a. Uh, and in this case, because we're talking about um, in, in the y direction, uh, it would actually be delta y max, okay? Okay, so it's being asked for maximum height, okay? Maximum height. So at maximum height, where should I write this? Um, at maximum height, that velocity final in the y direction, I guess I should put a comma in there, the velocity final in the y direction is actually, again, this is this is part of a definition, it's part of a rule, zero meters per second. Because just talking about the y component, and remember, remember this parabolic movement? Uh, once the ball has stopped going up, okay, and it starts to go down, for, for just an instant, the uh, velocity in the y direction is zero, just for a split second, okay? Not, a, not its total velocity, just in the y direction. But we're being asked about y max, so we're gonna be talking about the y, uh, the y direction, so maybe I should rewrite this uh, to look a little, bit, a little bit more clear so I can actually describe what I'm trying to do a little bit better. So this would be uh, a final velocity in the y direction squared is equal to the initial velocity the y direction initial squared plus two times the acceleration in the y direction multiplied by delta y max okay um <clears throat> so we're being asked for how no sorry how high above the thrower did the ball travel so we're being asked for delta y so uh, let's uh, rearrange this to solve for uh, delta y max. So let's see, how would I guess? I would go, whew, this looks like a big gobbledygook. Um, I guess I'd have to, I guess I'd wanna get rid of this first. So I'll go, I'll subtract the initial y velocity from both sides. Well, it was going to get messy. So that'll go away. And I'm also going to uh, have to get rid of all this stuff. So I'm going to have to divide both sides by 2 and divide both sides by 
the acceleration in the y direction. Okay, so two and acceleration in the y direction. Negative two, acceleration in the y direction. So what I have here is delta y max. Let's see. Holy cow. It's going to be Vy final minus Vy initial. Yeah, that's squared, but all divided by 2 times the acceleration uh, in the y direction. Okay, so now I can actually start plugging uh, stuff in for this. Almost, because this initial velocity is, uh, I mean, the only initial velocity that we have is, is the initial velocity of the resultant. Okay, so um, I don't want initial velocity. I want initial velocity in the y direction, okay, in the y direction. So in order to turn the initial velocity into initial velocity in the y direction, like I've actually written here, right, to turn this into this, I need, to hit, I need to take into consideration this angle. Now, y max is opposite the, so opposite the angle hypotenuse, that's going to be sine. So I'm going to uh, take um, sine of the angle. Make my bar a little longer. Um, and then that's, yeah. And then that's actually gonna be communicated, so that's actually gonna be that. All right, now, uh, because we know at the maximum height, this is actually going to be zero, All right? So uh, it's gonna be zero squared, haha, <laughs> it's nothing. Um, minus, uh, what does this end up being? 23 meters per second, because that's the initial velocity, but then I'm going, uh, well, I have to square it, and then I'm going to multiply that by the sine of uh, what's my angle? 25 degrees. I do have to square that also. But then I'm dividing everything uh, by 2 uh, multiplied by um, my acceleration in the y direction, which again is negative. Um, <clears throat> so a couple of things before we actually do the calculator. You see that, okay, first off, this just goes away. It's, it's a big nothing that these two uh, minus signs are actually going to uh, cancel each other out. They're actually going to cancel each other out. And so what I'll end up having at the final answer is a positive value. Okay, a positive value. Now, I have a lot of stuff to deal with here. So, uh, hopefully I don't screw this up uh, in my calculator work. But, let's see, so I have a... Um, So I have meters per second squared, but then I have meters per second, all of it squared. So that's actually gonna be meters squared divided by second squared. And so the second squared cancel out here, but only one of the meters will cancel out. So I'll actually still have one meter unit here. So uh, again, I'm going two significant figures. So this will end up being 4.8 meters. So we have <clears throat> the ball was in the air for 2.0 seconds, and uh, we saw that the ball got to a point 4.8 meters above the thrower.